प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समी पे रहो अमारिए नजर समी पे रहो अमारिए घनश्याम महाराज नी जय हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय सुप्रीम ऑल माइडी आर बिलवेड Gansham Maharaj, the path maker to our liberation, our beloved Pujapad Guruji, Pujya Bhagatji, and all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. Houston, we have a problem. At 55 hours in, 54 minutes in, and 53 seconds into the Apollo 13 mission, this outburst, this infamous quote was heard in Houston, space control, mission control, 200,000 miles away from the astronauts that were hanging in space. There was a problem they didn't know exactly what it was with their, with their spacecraft, which was going to the moon for just a normal visit, you can say. But more than that, there's a situation, a deeper situation. As just for a routine check, each and every frequent time, time to time, the aircraft was tested routinely in the space while traveling and on one of the routine checks they found out that an oxygen tank specifically the number two oxygen tank exploded and due to that they didn't have enough oxygen to reach back to earth alive this was the dilemma as soon as they found out, the astronauts commented to Mission Control in Houston, Houston, we have a problem. The astronauts wanted to return safely, but they knew they were in a critical position. They knew that they were in such a position that only God can help them on this one scientists involved in Houston started to make calculations and they displayed great teamwork and developed innovative ideas to get the whole Apollo 13 spacecraft back to Earth safely without any injuries occurring to the astronauts on board. But they knew that their efforts alone could not accomplish this task. And that's where there was an unseen force aiding their efforts. It was the divine force of prayer. This divine force of prayer was so spectacular and was invisible yet was visible that the whole world witnessed this in front of their eyes. So when the astronauts reported back to Houston, Mission Control, Mission Control not at first spread the word, but slowly but surely after notifying the President of the United States and the Cabinet, it was addressed to the public not only to the United States but the whole world and there at that time the Chicago Board of Trade 
gathered all of its assembly members and started to pray. Not only that, but the government of the United States called for a prayer for the whole nation. Not only that, but around the world, the Wailing Wall of Jerusalem prayed with different, different, whoever believed in whichever gods. But everyone started to pray. And at the end result, the mission was saved. Yet, they didn't accomplish their goal of reaching the moon, making a normal visit, and then coming back safely. But this catastrophic accident or mishap, was it done, was it an accident? Or maybe did Bhagwan do this to show how great or powerful weapon prayer can be? That's the vision that I can see from because if an oxygen tank breaks and they only have limited oxygen, how could the astronauts make it back? Yet, scientists were working on their, their efforts and calculations trying to balance the oxygen levels so that they can suffice for their journey back the 55 hours. But was it enough? Obviously, through this story, through this miracle, it was enough due to the unseen force of fate. Maharaj himself did this, you can say, charitra, to prove that prayer is such a powerful weapon. And this incident is noted in U.S. history. Everyone knows about this incident of Apollo 13. Why? because it wasn't just all about science in that factor. It was something more. There was spirituality involved in it. That's what made it special. And due to that factor, they returned back without any kind of damage to the astronauts, safe and sound, after making calculations. It's a long story how they got back, but they got back. That was the good news. But a prayer, to be specific, is a solemn request or thanksgiving to God. No one can do without it, you can say. Prayer is a last appeal to God to rescue from a desperate situation or circumstance. It's a connection with God. You can say prayer is not only where you're asking for something, but you're also connecting. You can be also thanking God in a prayer as well. But it's a direct connection with God. And due to that factor, we can see incidences day in and day out. Whoever has, you can say, this inclination of praying, that Bhagwan does help those who do pray. And I want to share a couple of charitras with all of you today regarding that so we can see that prayer is just not folding two hands and sitting in one position and closing one's eyes and that's it. Prayer is something deeper. Prayer is something where Bhagwan himself is listening whether we know it or not. But let's take a look and see the divine charitras of Maharaj's Haribhaktos, of how Maharaj saved them through those Haribhaktos' desperate prayers. And see how Maharaj also tested their Haribhaktos in a desperate time. So, at one time, in the village of Mangrol, in the district of Kanam, <coughs> there was a devotee by the name of Bechar Patidar. He was a great, great devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. He followed all of Bhagwan Swami Narayan's niyams. He was staunch in all of his, you can say, routines of a perfect satsangi. He did Bhagwan Swami Narayan's bhajan. But as an occupation, he was a farmer. And in his, you can say, time, his era, maybe it was land 
or maybe what it was his farming, but you can say he wasn't that good of a farmer. And also the land was had something to do with it as well. And due to that desperate measures, he could not make any kind of profit for the land. Because only if crops grow, then he can sell those crops and he can make a living. But he was very, very in a difficult situation with his farming occupation. So at one time, the government came to his home to collect taxes for the land. And the, the official agent, you can say, asked Bechar Patidar that, please pay your tax now, it's time. Bechar Patidar said that, I do not have the funds. My crops are not growing properly. I'm having trouble in this land. Please do understand. But in that time, the government was very strict and did not want to hear anything. So what they did was that they took Becher and they took him into jail. And for two whole days, they did not give him food or water and locked him in jail for such a, you can say, not even a crime. For such a punishment where it was, you can say, not necessary. Yet, the government came, locked him in jail for two whole days without any kind of food, without any kind of water. And there, at that time, after 40, 48 hours, Becher closed his eyes, folded his hands, and prayed to Maharaj, Maharaj, I am your devotee. I follow all your niyams. I have faith in you, so please rescue me from this terrible situation. Please help me out from this desperate measure. And right there and then, while Becher was praying, Becher was inside the jail. The jail bars were right in front of him, and he was praying there on his bed. And outside, guards were there standing. Maharaj was walking towards the jail cell. The guards could not speak anything, and they moved completely out of the side. Maharaj opened the jail cell door, took Becher, but with all of his, you can say, saman, all of his belongings, and placed him into a different area at that very moment. In Sadguru Gunatitan Swami's Vat, Swami says that how is Maharaj? Well, Maharaj says that you can do Dunvat to grass. If one does Dunvat prostrations to grass for some kind of help or for some kind of rescue, I will stay inside of that grass and I will help that person out. This vat proves that Maharaj is everywhere. Maharaj helps those who have faith inside of him. Kadi is reminded <coughs> that Santos here sing and also Hari Bhaktos know. Ajasudipana Mari Jivan Janu Chu Rako Cho Kabara Sari Jivan Janu Chu Pade Pade Karo Prati Pada Jivan Janu Chu Bijo Evo Kona Dayala Jivan Janu Chu Nishkuran Swami wrote, Aj Sudhi Panamari Jivan Janu. As of this time, as of this moment, right now, this second, you have taken care of me in each and every moment of my life from the beginning till this present time. And you will take care of me in the future. I know this for a fact. This is what Nishkuran Swami writes in Harismurti. This shows that if such a saint of this such a caliber can have faith in Bhagwan, why can we not see this vision as well? Why do we not see that every time we step foot outside or we get into some kind of circumstance, Maharaj is there to save us? Why can we not see this? If I can give you an example, suppose that you are driving in a car 
and you have to get to an area by within one hour and all of a sudden it was this was the most important event of the year that you had to attend it was pretty much very very important for you to attend you were planning for this the whole time the importance the significance was very high on this very event and you were driving to this event and you get a flat tire well at first you panic and then you try to recover as fast as possible try to replace the tire but you had to call AAA and it takes three hours for them to fix everything and by that time that whole event is done you become upset furious you can say I cannot believe this that why did Bhagwan do this at this very time he knew I had this event he knew that this was the most important thing why did this happen Bhagwan why did this happen you question you doubt yourself why did this happen you ask Bhagwan this why did this happen but after the car is repaired meaning the flat tires repaired you get back into the car and you start driving and there you see after one mile there's a huge accident that occurred where there was numerous ambulances and police cars and you can see that this was not a normal accident it was a fatal accident at that point if we can think that if Maharaj did not give me a flat tire and if I had kept going what if I was the one that got into that accident yet we cannot see this it's a vision that one needs to develop it's a longer vision but if we can see this from ahead meaning obviously you found this out afterwards but if we can develop some kind of thinking where if that situation were to happen where if you did receive a flat tire if we can accept it to be Bhagwan's Icha and he's doing it for my own good he's seeing some something in the future if you had this understanding and you get back into the car and you start driving and you see the accident you'll feel oh Maharaj you saved me you saved me I thank you so much this event can come another time but you saved my life Sukha Dukha Ave Sarve Bedu Tema Rakha Josti Ramati Jadvisha Maharajan Nevari Karisha Jatan Ati In any kind of Sukh Dukh meaning any kind of happiness or misery one should keep a very firm and focal point on Bhagwan a very stable mindset that Bhagwan will come and save me or rescue me from this catastrophe or you can say or something that's very small but we make it extremely big in our mind but this can only happen if we have this kind of understanding and Bechar but <coughs> Bechar Patidar prayed to Bhagwan and Bhagwan himself listened to his prayer and Bhagwan himself came and got him out of jail but obviously Bechar Patidar was not a normal Hari Bhagat he was of a high high caliber he followed every Agna of Bhagwan he performed the bhajan he remembered he worshipped God every day without missing even one time that's why Bhagwan came in the same fashion sometimes we have thoughts in our mind that I'm praying but why isn't Bhagwan listening to my prayers I'm praying but why isn't Bhagwan answering my prayers what am I doing wrong well I want to tell you that there's prerequisites to also performing a perfect prayer just like how there's prerequisites to develop a, or get into a good job or a career or get into a school or a college extra so on and so forth I don't need to give more examples regarding that all of you know in that same fashion there's prerequisites for prayer as well the number one prerequisite is faith in God this is the most important 
just think about it. If there is no base, how can a building be made? Faith in God is pretty much the base of the building. Due to that factor, at least you know Bhagwan is there listening to my prayer. So faith in God is number one. It's the root cause of success. I can say that for a fact because Bhagwan himself looks at that very factor the most. Number two, it's surrender to God. How much have you surrendered towards Him? How much have you given up for Him? How much have you done for Him? If we look in the world, we can see. If there is a friend, you have a friend, and we always tend to look that he's done this much for me, so I can do him this favor. Oh, he wants me to go and cup, run a couple of errands, or he wants me to do this project or do this homework assignment. I can do it for him. Why? Because he's done so much for me. We see this. In the same way, Bhagwan also has that kind of, you can say, scope. That Bhagwan also sees that, okay, how much bhajan has this Bhagat done of mine? How much has he remembered me? How much dharmniyams has he followed? How much agnas of the Shikshaputri has he followed? All these prerequisites are seen. All these prerequisites Maharaj looks for. And surrenderance to God is one of them. Number three is love for God. Obviously, if you have affection for God, you very much so would remember Him time in and out. You very much so would think of Him and see that Bhagwan is looking at me, Bhagwan is admiring me, I am admiring Bhagwan. Due to that, Bhagwan also likes one who likes himself. And number four is purification. If you have a pure mind, if we have a pure soul, if we have a pure body, then Bhagwan will accept our prayer. If we are not up to standard with this fourth step, then it's very, very difficult for Bhagwan to accept our prayer because Bhagwan likes someone who is pure. So these are the four prerequisites of performing a single, you can say, perfect prayer if we have all these four at the utmost top level. But let's take it one step further. If, we're, if we'll be able to measure our level as how great of a devotee I am of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. So we saw Bechar but his situation, how he prayed to Maharaj for rescue. Now, there's a devotee by the name of Viro Shelaryo who lived in a, a village in Gathiawad district. And this devotee was same like Bechar, performed all the niyams. He had faith in God. He did, he remembered Bhagwan, he worshipped God. Every single thing, copyright, match. But he had a different vision, a different understanding that this charitra will tell us. So in his village, there is a village head for each village. And in his village, there is a person by the name of Hado Kuman, who is completely against satsang who was completely against the Swaminarayan sect at that point. And at one time, when Viro went to Gadara to have the darshan of Maharaj, this Haro Kuman commanded a couple of his people to go and burn down Viro's home. So these people went and completely burned down Viro's home and went away. Then when Viro came back after having the darshan of Maharaj, Hado Kuman came in front where Vito was standing pretty much looking at his burned home and he commented with a smirk see Vito what did you gain by becoming Swami Narayan and going to Gadara see what your Swami Narayan did to you look Vito smiled and he said Swami Narayan has done a lot for me you cannot see, but my family, 
You can see my bullock cart, my grains, and my belongings I took with me. And everyone is saved. Marad saved me. If they were all inside the home, and you l lighted the f lighted the home on fire at that point, then we would have all died. But Marad saved us from this factor, so I'm not worried at all. And he left the whole village for good. Hardokuman could not believe what he had just heard or seen. He could not understand the factor that. Vito was not phased at all by this, you can say, cruel act that he had performed. But from seeing this point, if we can understand, in the words of the Vachnamrut, Bhagwan Samriyan gives us advanced knowledge. We just learned how to pray the four prerequisites and about Bichur and how he prayed to God. And then finally, this story about Vito and how he had a different understanding but what kind of understanding does Bhagwan himself like what kind of understanding did Vito have that made him say that particular answer to Hado instead of breaking down into tears or instead of getting angry and furious well Bhagwan states in the Vachnam Gadara middle chapter Gadara last chapter 13th Vachramrut. It is that very God who is the sole controller of this body. Such a person believes that Bhagwan controls my body. If he wishes, he may oblige and the body with the body and he may ride a person with on an honorable ride or an elephant if he wishes. He may have it thrown in this prison, meaning this devotee has such an understanding regarding this body or if he so wishes he may even place some serious illness in this body despite this one should never pray before God in, follow, in the following manner Maharaj please, please relieve me from my misery now Bechur Bhats Bechur Patidar's understanding compared to Vito Shailurio's understanding. A big difference, we can say. Now, we don't have to see who's a greater devotee and who's not, but proving that Bhagwan likes such kind of understanding where no matter what kind of situation, circumstance Bhagwan puts us through, Bhagwan likes one who says, or one who understands that Maharaj, please relieve me of my miseries he does not like this he does not want this why because we want this body to behave in accordance with the wishes of God after all God's wish is our wish if we understand that if this is Bhagwan's wish then so be it then we completely if we think about it suppose the Pacific Ocean right you have a drop of water and you pretty much bring the drop of water it's in a plastic container the small plastic container you go in the middle of the Pacific Ocean on a boat you open the container and you drop that one drop of water inside the ocean will you be able to tell the difference besides that drop and the ocean no. In the same exact fashion, Bhagwan is the ocean and we're that small drop. Bhagwan wants us to become like him. Bhagwan wants us to become within his wishes. But all we have to do is drop into the ocean. On the other side, suppose we're there's a big puddle of water and there's only a couple drops there. We wait until the rain comes and a little bit of rain comes and a little bit of the puddle develops and then after some su sunshine it evaporates again. Happens on and off, on and off. That puddle will never become anything bigger than a puddle. It will never go to a lake size or even you can say 
pond size or even an ocean size. But if we take our drop, if we take ourself and completely melt it into the Bhagwan's wishes, we become like the ocean itself. In this accordance, Bhagwan is saying that with the wishes of God, after all, God's wish is our wish. We do not want our preferences to differ from, pre from the preferences of God, even in the slightest way. Maharaj himself is saying this to us. Moreover, since we have offered our body, mind, and wealth to God, then now only the will of God is our pradabd, meaning destiny. Besides that, there is nothing, there is no other pradabd, meaning there is no other destiny besides Bhagwan's wish. If we give something to someone, after so much thought, for example, if I have, if there is a devotee that has one million dollars, and if he gives that one million dollars to another devotee with a contract signing and everything, all the paperwork, that devotee that gave the million dollars, after five years, will he say that this is my million dollars? No. You gave it away. It's given away. You didn't you didn't it wasn't a loan it wasn't borrowed there's no promissory note there's nothing you in the contract wrote I am giving one million dollars to this devotee and that's it I don't want it back nothing then after five years can we say can we even compliment that one million dollars is mine which is sitting in that person's bank account no there's no we can do that in the same way, after giving up our body, mind, after giving up all our habits and all of our, you can say, swabhaos and natures, and giving it to Bhagwan, giving everything to Bhagwan, how can we say that at times when Bhagwan maybe tests us for a little bit, Bhagwan, why did you do this to me, or why did you do that, or I have this illness in my body and it's very, very tough to recover from Maybe you can relieve me as fast as possible. How could you say this? You've given everything to him. If we are a true devotee. This is for, remember I said, this is advanced knowledge. This is for such a Hari Bhagat who possesses such a higher understanding. This is not for an ordinary level's understanding. This is for a Hari Bhagat that has given up totally and has offered everything to Bhagwan and doesn't want it back. This is the question I'm asking to such a Bhagat. Now we can test or we can see in our heart that are we such kind of devotee of Bhagwan. And finally, therefore, regardless of whatever pain or pleasure we may encounter by the wish of God, we should not become disturbed in any way. We should be pleased with whatever pleases God. Maharaj's words are very, very powerful. Not only that, but you can see that they're very, very concentrated. They focus on what he likes the most, which is very, very easy in one way and difficult on the other. It's a matter of changing our perspective, our vision. It's a matter of associating with the Ekantik Satpurush. Along that factor, our Puja Guruji has the same exact understanding that Bhagwan is showing in this Vachnamrut. There are so many incidences in his life. He has said in so many numerous, numerous gathas that he has never prayed one single time for himself, for his body, his mind, or any kind of situation at all. He has only prayed for the other's benefit. Just a couple of months ago, when he went to Gotib to do Bahrain, there our, one of our devotees uh, from Loya Dam Parivar in Chicago, namely Rajas Parik, became very ill at that time for two days where he had extreme pain in his body and he could not bear it. So he told Puja Guruji, or his family members did, he did not tell, his family members had called and told Puja Guruji. And Puja Guruji at that, ni at time, at that time was praying for him. In his well being, he did dun, but not only at that time at the in the mid in midnight 
around 12, 1230, when Guruji was sleeping, there was a faint, you can say sound, heard from his room. And Santos went in and inquired, and it was Guruji's chanting Bhagwan's name. In the morning, Santos required, inquired, Guruji, aren't you sleeping? Guruji was in pain. He actually felt a tears that one of our devotees of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, one of our devotees is sick, is very ill. So I cannot bear this pain. And due to that, I am worshipping or I am praying to Bhagwan that he becomes better. And in that time, after praying, just within 24 hours, Rajesh Bhagat's health was back to normal. Because Guruji had those four prerequisites that were necessary. Because Guruji had no kind of intention or swarth or self self selfish motive behind that prayer. Bhagwan listened to his prayer. So saying that, do not ask yourself when you do pray, whoever does, that why isn't Bhagwan listening to my prayer? Or why isn't it happening? So I shouldn't do it. Ask yourself, do I have these prerequisites? Ask yourself that will Bhagwan like it if I pray, if we are an advanced devotee? Ask yourself these things. And from that, you can say a noise or you can say a sound will come from your heart that will tell you the answer. Finally, today is the date of September 11th, 2016. 15 years ago, a very, very catastrophic accident, if we can say accident, occurred in New York, New York with the Twin Towers. Everyone knows this incident, but we remember all those whose lives were taken away from this tragic event. And we pray that their souls have attained some kind of peace at heart. And in the future, whenever their souls also attain this satsang, so they can also worship Bhagwan Swaminarayan, understand him to be supreme, and attain the divine abode of Akshardham. So, a moment of silence in saying this. We pray for those, we remember them, Ending that point, winter workshop is coming up in December 30, 31, January 1st. Please attend. You can register online, theswaminarayan.org. Gansham Maharaj Nije Pujarushivalab Swami will now give his lecture.
ಭರ್ಣಿವೇಶರಮಣೀಯ ದರ್ಶನ ಮಂದಹಾಸರುಚಿರಾಧನಾಭುಜ ಪೂಜಿ ಸುರನರೋತ್ತಮೇರ್ಮುದ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಶ್ರೀಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀ ಜಯ ಆಲ್ ಮೈಟಿ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಲಾಡ್ ಅವರ್ ಬಿ ಲೌಡ್ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಪಾತ್ಮಿಕ ಟೋರ್ ಲಿಬ್ರೇಷನ್ ಹು ಈಸ್ ಸ್ಟೇಯಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ಯುವರ್ ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಅವರ್ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಪಾತ್ ಗುರುಜಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಡಿಯೋಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಇನ್ನು ಭಕ್ತ ಚಿಂತಾಮಣಿ ಸಮ್ ಸಿಲೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾನ್ ಆಸ್ ಪರ್ಚಾ ಪ್ರಕರಣ ಇನ್ ದೋಸ್ ಚಾ ದೋಸ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಆನ್ ಒನ್ ಫೋರ್ಟಿ ಏಟ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಒನ್ ಫೋರ್ಟಿ ಏಟ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ನಿಸ್ ಕುರಾನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ ಅಸ್ ಸಮ್ ಇನ್ಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ಫಿಮೇಲ್ ಡ್ಯೂ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಹೌ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಪ್ರೂವ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಹಿ ಈಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎವರ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಅರ್ತ್ ಆಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಆಸ್ ಹೌ ಹಿ ಆಸೆಪ್ಟೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೌ ಹಿ how he accepted the devotion and affection from the heart of the devotees for him now today in school and some also describe the other incident happened in some other female devotee's life and those incidents as we describe earlier those incident also happened in the city of vadodara in the same way today's incident also of the vadodara there was a female devotee whose name was jamuna bai and she was from a brahmin family now as she took a refuge in swaminarayan fellowship as she became a devotee of bhagwan swaminarayan after becoming a devotee just as the other devotee engaged themselves in the devotion of bhagwan swaminarayan in the same way this jamuna bai she also engaged herself in the devotion of bhagwan swaminarayan now what happened after some days some years and also after some months as she gradually increased her devotion her affection towards bhagwan swaminarayan and in the same way gradually just as she increased her devotion automatically bhagwan swaminarayan himself gave something extraordinary things to her not the things but some high position in the spirituality now after many years what happened once upon a day bhagwan swaminarayan himself came to her home not in a physical i mean not in a human form but he just appeared in her home and after appearing just as at uh, at the time jamuna bai she was preparing thal for maharaj in the kitchen there maharaj appeared and maharaj himself asked for some food maharaj said to jamuna bai i i am very hungry so give me some food to eat in this way bhagwan swaminarayan himself accepted her devotion why because she was making thal for maharaj only whatever she she was doing in the kitchen making any kind of uh, eatables food she had all time remembrance of bhagwan swami narayan's divine form and as she had too much affection for maharaj that's why she also desired to feed maharaj and as he had desired to feed maharaj maharaj himself come to eat so this incident teaches us that if we have the desire to feed maharaj if we have a desire or if we have a devotion a pure devotion for maharaj then whatever we offer him he will ready to accept now this this was the first day but after after that not a single day remained without the presence of maharaj in the home of jamuna bai why because she had too much love and affection for maharaj and every day she had a desire to feed maharaj that's why maharaj every day come 
and wearing different different ki- kinds of clothes different colored clothes now after having darshan of maharaj in different clothes jumna bai also enjoy the darshan of maharaj and also she enjoy to offer his devotion to maharaj in the form of different different eatables meaning different different kinds of foods not only this but after eating maharaj said for some times and for uh, in this time maharaj himself talk many things he himself share many things with jamuna bai and in his talks maharaj himself sometimes he preach to jamuna bai some extraordinary satsang things and some other times maharaj himself disclose some secrets of the past and also some uh, maharaj also said something about the future now what happened when maharaj disappeared from jamuna bai's home and after that time when the other devotees as well as her relatives came in the home and as she made all the other people she also described that maharaj told her about this past evening or uh uh past event or whatever happened in someone's life or someone's home or anywhere the reason behind this is that in this way she described what maharaj told her not only that jamuna bai also disclosed something which which will be happen in the future then the other people thought how she knew all these things then she say maharaj himself come to my home and he himself told me that this will be done this will be happen in the future this will be happen in after 3 or 4 days or a week in this way all the devotees also got surprised and those who are non believer they become after uh, after having witnessed this incident the all the non believer they become devotees of bhagwan swami narayan now after this incident nishkuran and swami write uh, the another incident which was also happened in the vadodara there was another uh, female devotee whose name was parvati bai and she was uh, she was wife of a goldsmith meaning her husband was doing some work of uh work with the gold but the main problem was that in the house in the family only parvati bai was the devotee of bhagwan swami narayan and all the other his husband uh his parents all in a in a house they all were a non believer sometimes what happened even at present times some devotee they only alone a devotee in a home in their family and the other they were not believe in bhagwan swami narayan no doubt in some families even though only one member become a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan the other have no problem even they don't believe in bhagwan swami narayan still they have no problem so they support the one who worship bhagwan swami narayan and in some other family if the one member of the family become a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan and the other they were non believer meaning they don't believe in bhagwan swami narayan then what happened the others those who are non believer they always try to stop the one who worship bhagwan swami narayan this is the wrong thing if you do not believe in this thing then you just don't do that things but do not disturb one who engage himself for worshiping bhagwan swami narayan but in the life of parvati bai she had many struggle many many problems towards bhagwan swami narayan because 
she was alone a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan in her family and as i described the two cases and the second i described the same thing happened in the life of parvati bai all those other non believer they always try to tease or try to stop or try to disturb while parvati bai worshiping bhagwan swami narayan and she had a restriction not to go outside from the house for worshiping bhagwan swami narayan not in a mandir not to other devotees home nothing now parvati bai accepted all this condition all the situations she believed as it is written in the scriptures and as santo many times described in the discourse that everything happen only and only because of bhagwan's wish so this is also happen because of bhagwan swami narayan's wishes without the desire of bhagwan swami narayan nothing will nothing was happen in this world and nothing is happening today or present time in this world and nothing will be happen in the future in this way parvati bai thinking in this way she accepted all this situation in her life and after accepting the situation say didn't go outside from his home not in a mandir or not in other devotees home or she never came in a contact of other devotees still she worshiping bhagwan swami in his in her home so this incident also teaches that whenever we have such kind of condition in our life we should pray to maharaj if we have from faith in the form of bhagwan swami narayan if we have from faith in the ekantik sant of bhagwan swami narayan and if we pray to bhagwan as well as his ekantik sant like puja guru ji then definitely bhagwan as well as puja guru ji accept our prayer even though we are very far from him as a physical distance still maharaj as well as puja guru ji listen our prayer and not only they listen but even they give some kind of positive result to us positive answer to our prayer so just as parvati bai requested and pray to maharaj every day now what happened after some days just as she had no chance to go outside in a mandir or to meet other devotees or she had no chance to listen the katha from the santo nothing and she only doing bhajan and worshiping bhagwan swami in her home now bhagwan become very pleased upon her and after becoming pleased maharaj himself manifest her i mean appear in front of parvati bai in her home many times bhagwan gave darshan to all the other family members as well as the other people and sometimes he alone appear in front of parvati bai just as jamuna bai had too much affection for maharaj and that's why she made a, she prepared a thar for maharaj and maharaj himself accepted her what you she made for him in the same way parvati bai also had too much affection for maharaj and that's why as she prepared any kind of foods at the time she had also desired to feed maharaj but many times she cried why because she had no any kind of chance to go outside from her home that's why maharaj also listen her prayer maharaj himself appear in her home and he himself eat something made by parvati bai and sometimes maharaj himself ask her to give particular kinds of food to him 
now in this way days one day two days three days in this way many days passed and not a single day maharaj remained without appear in parvati bai's home sometimes maharaj himself appear and come uh, came in in the home of parvati bai with some divine foods from aksarda and also give this prasad this divine prasad to parvati bai once upon a day parvati bai desired to feed maharaj bhajya now what happened uh as she desired to feed maharaj hot bhajya then what happened maharaj himself appear in the home of parvati bai and in front of parvati bai maharaj asked uh, maharaj told her that i have too much hung- hunger in my stomach i want to eat but today i do not want to eat anything but i want to eat bhajya then parvati bai said maharaj it's okay please sit for some times very few times i will give you a uh, very hot bhajya now what happened parvati bai had too much affection for maharaj and in this affection she forgot everything and she very uh in a very speedy she uh tried to make bhajya but what happened as she had nothing else in her mind without bhagwan swami and that's why what happened as she put bhajya in the hot oil she immediately came, uh immediately came all uh came out all uh, p- uh pick up all those bhajyas in a other vessel meaning she did not uh let all those bhajyas completely fried and as she offered this uncooked bhajya to maharaj maharaj even watch for some times what is this but as we know maharaj never complain us even though we offer him some uncooked food he accepted he never complain us even we forget to add some salt in some particular food she never complain sometimes even we add some more hot chili powder then he never complain he is ready to accept our devotion and that's why in the same way maharaj also accepted love of parvati bai in the form of uncooked bhajya but what happened after eating this uncooked bhajya just as if we eat this uncooked bhajya what happened in our stomach this is not the um not a point of dis- uh, discrimination or not a point of description but if we eat this then we will feel what will happen in our stomach but this is maharaj so he is totally different from human beings many times he accepted the role of human beings but many times he only remain as bhagwan so after eating this uncooked bhajya in the home of parvati bai after eating after completing everything just as he disappear from this home he appear in the another in the next street from this parvati bai's home and he appear in mogi bai's home there maharaj told mogi bai that today i eat uncooked bhajya that's why i have some pain in my stomach then mogi bai she was a devotee of bhagwan swami and that's why she asked maharaj maharaj who offer you this uncooked bhajya and why you accepted it why you eat then maharaj said 
I have to accept all kinds of love, all kinds of devotion of my devotees. That's why I have to eat this uncooked food. And by saying this, Maharaj also disappeared from the home of Mongibai. Then Mongibai immediately came out from her home. She directly reached to Parati Bai's home. Just as Maharaj told her that Parati Bai gave me some uncooked bhajya and I ate it. Then Mongi Bai reached to Parati Bai's home. There he asked her, why are you uh, why you gave Maharaj uncooked bhajya? Then Parati Bai said, no, I don't know. It's, I think, completely cooked. Then Mogibai said, No, Maharaj himself come to my home and he himself said me that he today ate uh, uncooked bhajya. Then, and then after Mogibai said to Paradibai, Please, you accept the remaining prasad of Maharaj. You yourself examine that the bhajya, whether the bhajya bhajiyas are cooked or uncooked. Then both Mogibai and Paradibai they are examining the bhajiyas, the remaining prasad of Maharaj and then they both got the point that all of those bhajiyas were uncooked. Now Paradibai had too much uh, tension and some kind of pain in her heart that I fed Maharaj uncooked food. But this is the devotion. It doesn't matter. Now in the next incident, uh, Niskuran and some described the other incident in the life of uh, Jamunabai. She was not uh, from Brahmin family, so she was different from the incident written in the earlier. Now, she was a uh, devotee of Bhagavan Swami Narayan and gradually she also increase her devotion and because of her devotion she also get a higher position in the satsang and that's why Bhagwan Swami himself gave her the position and um, position of a uh, samadhi but this is a different kind of samadhi just as in the other incident described in the some other chapters of Bhakta Chintamani there are in those chapters in those incidents those who are, uh, attain the status of samadhi those devotees whether the devotees of female or male that doesn't matter but those devotees who attain the samadhi they sat for meditation and in the meditation they went direct to Maharaj this is a different kind of samadhi now this Jamunabai she had totally different kind of samadhi even while without closing her eyes she can see Bhagwan Swami Narayan this is the uniqueness in her samadhi now this is her situation and because of devotion she had too much affection for Maharaj and that's why she always feed different different kinds of eatables to Maharaj in a samadhi meaning we cannot see it but Jamuna Bai herself offer some eatables in thar to Maharaj and Maharaj himself eat just as we offer thal to Maharaj, Maharaj eats, but we cannot see it. But this Jamunabai can see it. This incident teaches us those devotees, whether the sant or a devotee, a male or a female, if the devotee attain such kind of samadhi, such kind of higher status in the spiritual world, then what happened? This can be attained only by only and only by the desire of Maharaj, not by our own practice or our own endeavor. So whoever become uh, become a choice of Maharaj, those duty who attain such kind of samadhi and we can uh, we cannot find we cannot uh, realize that this devotee had this this kind of devotion towards Maharaj that he can see Maharaj face to face 
just as we are watching each other but such kind of duty even present today in this world just as uh we ha- we all did darshan of puja guru ji while he was doing puja in the mandir as well as in the sant ashram here in us as well as many times when we go to in, uh, when we 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 are in india at the time also we have a chance to have a darshan of puja guru ji while he was doing puja now i have a question just as a duty of bhagwan swami narayan we all doing puja every day right but we do not do darshan of puja of any other devotees but we are very eager to do darshan in the puja of puja guru ji why because maharaj himself present in front of puja guru ji whatever he offers to maharaj he himself accept big Be- that doesn't matter we cannot see it we cannot see maharaj in the puja of puja guru ji why because we have not attained such higher spiritual status but this is the truth this is the 100% sure that whenever and whatever guru ji offer to maharaj he himself accept here hand to hand even we cannot see this incident but some sometimes we can have a chance to enjoy such kinds of incident even we cannot have a chance to how witness of such kind of incident but still we have some incident and by listening such incident we can enjoy the divinity many years ago when guruji was in a in a african countries i think in a kenya there uh in in the mandir there were many thousands of devotees and in present of de- those devotees they the de- at the time in india uh some news are broadcasted through all kinds of medias in newspaper and in the tv televisions everywhere that the all forms of ganpati vignavinayak dev the drinks milk so the devotees at the time puja guru ji was in a nairobi mandir there the devotees ask puja guru ji that we do not believe in whether this news is true or false then puja guru ji uh, ask those devotees can we try then those devotees agreed then guru ji said give me some milk with uh, all kinds of meaning um uh, cashew almonds and everything sugar everything now devotees prepare 2 liters meaning half a gallon of milk now guru ji offered those milk as with a spoon to his thakur ji and thakur ji immediately drinks the milk now after some times with a spoon it is very long t- uh, process to drinks or uh, too much uh, meaning half a gallon milk so guru ji offer the whole bowl then thakur ji drinks all those uh, the full of, uh, the milk full of the bowl so this incident witnessed by thousands of devotees in the mandir so if we remember such kind of incident then we believe that this incident written in the bhakta chintamani that was also true and the incident happened today in a life of puja guru ji that was also true and finally by such kind of incident we believe that bhagwan swami narayan is forever present on this earth now in the case of this jamuna bai as she offered whatever offered to maharaj maharaj himself accepted her devotion but the other non believer her family member they don't believe in this thing all those people they say jamuna bai was false her devotion is not true 
and her Bhagwan, meaning Bhagwan Swaminarayan, is also false. Now, those all non-believers they agreed to accept this uh, divinity only with the condition. They have the condition that if you are Bhagwan, if you uh, all those non-believers there say to Jamuna Bai that if you make a thal and if you offer uh, different different kinds of tables to your Bhagwan and if he eat all those things then we believe that your Bhagwan is true your devotion is true and you as a duty of Bhagwan Swaminarayan is true now Jamuna Bai accepted their condition their challenge and she made a thal she prepared everything a good deeds for Maharaj now after that she prayed to Maharaj Maharaj please come to my home come in front of me and please accept my devotion then Maharaj himself divinely appear over there no one as no one besides Jamuna Bai can have a darshan of Maharaj and Maharaj eats half a dish and after eating this much Maharaj himself give all this uh, the half this prasadi to Jamuna Bai and not only this but after eating after completing everything Maharaj also gave her a uh, garland made of flower fresh flowers now all the devotees they have the darshan of this half remaining plate half remaining dish as a prasadi and not only this but all those do and those non-believers they have also uh, the other evidence that Bhagwan Swaminar is uh, forever present on this earth that that was the garland of different flowers so in this way by describing this much incident in 148 chapter Nishkudana Swami ends this chapter 148 and by this incident we can also learn many many things in our life whenever we are alone we feel uh, loneliness at the time we should pray to Maharaj and if we pray to Maharaj just as Bhagwan Swami and himself manifested appear in front of Parvati Bhai as she, she was alone in the same way if we feel loneliness and we pray to Maharaj we pray to our Puja Guruji they both remain with us they both give us us they both even ready to become a companion of us but for that we need to pray him okay for that just as we listen this message from this incident we should try to pray to Maharaj as well as Puja Guruji when we feel loneliness or even we have we are not feeling loneliness still we should pray to Maharaj and Puja Guruji so that they forever reside in our heart and forever remain with us in each and every activities each and every day with us by saying this Jai Swami Narayan Sri Ganeshyam Maharaj Ni Jai Sri Patim Sri Dharam Sarvadeveshwaram Bhakti Dhar Matmajam Vasudevam Hare Madhavam Keshavam Kamadam Karanam Swamina Rayanam Nilakantham Bhaji Sri Ganeshyam Maharaj Nij